Next up, we're going to hear from Wendy Peterson and Jean Swanson and Phoenix Winter and Herb Varley. They've all been very much involved in the local area plan for the downtown east side. Hello, my name is Wendy Peterson and I'm here with Access TV, shamelessly promoting our friends and community. Um, decades from now, we'll look back on the downtown east side and we'll say that this year, 2014, was a watershed year for that historic community. On March 12th of 2014, uh, the City Council's um, Mayor and councillors, they'll make a historic decision about whether or not to accept a plan, a 30-year development plan for the downtown east side. It's a meeting at City Hall that you're not going to want to miss. So we have with us in the, today, uh, in the studio today uh, three people who've been actively trying to influence the outcome of that plan. We have Herb Varley, who's a Niska and New Chalmuth man who has lifelong experience living in the downtown east side, volunteering and working there. He's lived under the pressure of gentrification in a hotel, and now lives in Aboriginal housing, and he was the former co-chair of the city's planning process around this plan. Welcome, Herb. We've got Phoenix Winter here. She's a long-term downtown Eastside community member. Uh, she was formerly homeless, has lived uh, with the stigma and struggle of mental illness, and she also has been involved in the local area planning process since the, the start. And we also have um, Jean Swanson, who's been on Access TV before to talk about the downtown east side. She's a, a long-term community member. Uh, she authored a two-year study that was done with 1,200 residents in the downtown east side um, that produced a vision for our community. And uh, she's one of the few people who I know who've read this 183-page report uh, about the downtown east side that City Council is going to potentially approve on March 12th. And, um, She's been involved in the planning process too. Welcome, Jean Swanson. So thank you all for being here. And I, we want to get into, we want our audience to understand what this historic plan uh, that's coming forth from City Hall is. So Phoenix, but could, you, could we back it up a bit? And Phoenix, could you tell us a little bit about who the downtown Eastside community is? One of the things that struck me about the downtown Eastside community when I came here, and I was homeless at the time, I was really, really lonely being homeless in other places. And when I came down here, there were so many people to talk to in the downtown east side and people that would say, have you eaten yet? And they'd be willing to get me a meal. And one of the guys I knew, he only had $3 in his pocket, but he saw somebody else who looked hungrier than him. And he gave him his last $3 so he could get a meal. So it's the kind of community where people care about each other. And, and a lot of us didn't have family. And our family were the people on the street. And it's really, there's one guy who used to spend time on the corner every day and Bingo would say hi to everybody that went by and give him hugs and advice and it's that kind of a place. So how many people live in the downtown east side and where do they live? Well, there's about 18,000 people that are said to live in the downtown east side, but there's a lot of people that make the downtown east side their orbit, their home. and. Um, they may not live there, but they come down there because that's where their friends are and that's where their community is. So the numbers is actually higher than that. And how many of them are low income, just quickly? The, those are the low income people. The higher okay. income people don't really want to be around there. So there's about t ten to 12,000 low income people out of the 18,000. And then Herb, um, so you got involved in this local area planning process in the, with the city. Why did you get in, involved to make a plan for your community? Hmm. <laughs> That's a tough question, uh, given that's everything that's happened in the past year. But uh, the terms of reference, which uh, Jean and I believe you uh, negotiated for over for a year, set, the terms of reference basically sets out the, it's like, almost like the constitution of the committee, how it's going to run itself, the rules of how the committee uh, governs itself. Um, and this terms of reference was promising. It, 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 um, it gave uh, the low-income community a, a, a majority of the of a majority of the seats on the committee, um, <clears throat> which which was pretty much unprecedented. Uh, you know, we're about seventy-one percent of the community down here, but we get uh, probably about zero percent of the say. Mm -hmm. So this term, the terms of reference, this lap had the potential to really, really enhance our lives as a low-income community and maintain this, 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 this togetherness. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> I have lived in other communities, and there isn't the same sense of togetherness. Right. Um, for all the 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 warts that the downtown e east side has, uh, it's still a great community. So I wanted to preserve this kind of the the the, the feeling that Phoenix was talking about. I was hoping that we could do that. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, though. Okay, Jean, you've read this 183-page report. Is it going to help protect the things that you've heard Phoenix and um, Herb talk about today, plus the 1,200 residents that you surveyed about what they want for the downtown east side? Is there any wins in this vision for the downtown east side here? There's one win, but overall, I think it's going to destroy the low-income community if it goes like it is, which is why we need lots of people to go up to City Hall on the 12th and fight to get more housing put in it. The one win is a proposal that one tiny sub-area of the downtown east side, the Oppenheimer area, be zoned so that it requires that if new housing is built there, it has to be 60% social housing and 40% rental housing. So it'll keep condos out, keep condos from pushing up property values, make land cheaper so social housing can be built there. But in terms of actual new construction, a lot of people got involved in the lap because there's a housing crisis in the downtown east side. There's 730 homeless people. There's about 5,000 people living in really crummy hotel rooms that don't have a bathroom, don't have a kitchen, have lots of pests. And we really wanted for that housing to be replaced with self-contained social housing. So when you look at this, it's not there. It's not, okay. They're saying that it, they're going to build lots of social housing, but there's a key little thing, the definition of social mm -hmm. housing. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that only one third of it has to be at welfare rates. Mm -hmm. yeah. So even in the DEOD, only about a fifth of the new housing would be for people who live in the SROs now. So Phoenix, do residents in the downtown east side know what's coming up? Do they, and how have you been getting the word out about this? One of the things that we wanted in the local area plan was a social justice zone, and we had 3,000 signatures from residents that we gave to the people at City Hall, and that's a pretty strong message that people are rallying behind a more social justice zone, a sanctuary zone, and social housing, and those kinds of things. Um, but now we're going out and we're holding a town hall at the Carnegie Center on February 8th to get people at, aware and try and decipher the 183-page report so people can understand. <coughs> it's really, really hard to understand the language in the report because it's planneries. And um, the other thing we've been doing is putting um, leaflets out, um, going to the Carnegie Newsletter and the Downtown East newspaper and talking to people on the street about the local area plan. So Herb, do you have any hope for the mayor and council to change their mind and edit this vision to make it more friendly for low-income people? And uh, yeah, do you have any hope for that? Or what will it take to change their minds? Political will. Um, talking about a green city and a healthy city framework and all that is, it sounds nice. Uh, it's good rhetoric, but without the political will to go back to the provincial government, to the federal government, and get the funding that used to be there in the, you know, in the 60s and started dying out in the 80s, uh, to get a, you know, a social housing, or a, a housing platform, not just for BC, but for Canada. I believe Canada is one of the only G8 countries that doesn't have a national housing plan. And without that housing, this community is going to fall apart mm -hmm. and die. Jean, in a nutshell, how can people get involved at this stage before March 12th? Well, come to our town hall meeting on February 8th. Check out the Carnegie Community Action Project website. I think we're going to have a rally and get people to go up to City Hall and speak to the plan on March 12th. Thank you so much, Jean Swanson, Phoenix Winter, Herb Varley, for all the work you're doing in the community. We'll stay in touch with this issue, um, and thank you for being on Access TV. Okay. Thanks for having us. And that was LAP on Access TV. For more information on the March 12th date at the City Hall, you can go to uh, ccapvancouver.wordpress.com and check out uh, Car Carnegie Community Action Project. Thank you, Gunnarji.